In this video, I am going to show you the insides of my RTX 3090. This is part of the HP Omen PC, the 30L. And uh, the reason why I wanted to open this up in the first place is it really has a problem with keeping the VRAM temperatures down when you're using this either for some extreme gaming or if you're doing crypto mining. And I wanted to see if there was a, a quick and easy fix to handling the thermals, see uh, if there's anything I could do to, uh, to get this to run you know, nice and cool. Ideally, I want to have it running somewhere between 90 and 95 degrees Celsius um, with a hash rate over a hundred that's the minimum I'm, I'm going for here and I think it can be achieved uh, based on what I saw inside so um, <clears throat> so yeah let me uh, let me open it up I've already removed all the hardware to it there's a couple of screws on the side here that you can um, use to take off the, the fan and once you have that out you can kind of pull it up like that and then there's two connections to the motherboard that you pull out so that's the fan this top piece for the fan that's pretty easy to uh, to take out so I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside there's also um, on the back side there's other screws on the top so there's basically some small screws that are holding this back plate and then these two ones with the spring, the bigger screws are holding uh, like the motherboard together. Um, so wanna definitely take these out and then the smaller screws. And then also there's um, some screws on the side and also the, this panel here has four screws that you wanna remove and then you can separate this part. Um, and then once you remove the rest of the hardware, that's when you can separate everything. So um, before you try to just pull at it, uh, just make sure that you are taking another look around there. Make sure there's no screw that you missed because um, you do have to kind of pull at it a little bit to get it up, but it shouldn't take too much force. So if you, if you feel like you might break it, just double check for a screw. But there is some thermal paste holding this piece together. I've already removed it, so I'm going to just pull that up there. Now here's what I noticed with the uh, the thermal paste. There was thermal paste on the processor and uh, they went a little overkill so it's built over but that, that's really not the issue. Um, the issue with this board is the the memory is getting too hot. The VRAM is getting too hot. The temperatures I was getting for the uh, the the core weren't too bad even under extreme gaming and with mining you can turn it down even even lower so it's not here that's getting hot and even though they used the the cheap paste there um it didn't look burnt or anything it was still a decent consistency so i don't think that was an issue um so let me uh pull this part out here's where the problems for this board really start to show themselves so when you separate well, I'll pull the other side out first since there's no paste so um, you got your memory chips here and then also on the other side there's a little paste still holding this together um, so let me just pull that out see it took a little bit of force um, but there's some basically some thermal pads or paste or whatever it is um, and, and the stuff here is holding up pretty good. The consistency still, still is all right. So it tells me that on this side where it's connected to this metal plate, um, it was still doing okay, a decent job at cooling everything off. But there was no, there was no paste or anything on this area here where this side of the plate is pulling the heat from the chips on this side so this metal here is going to be warm but there was no paste 
on this area to transfer that heat. I mean, it was doing a decent job, but not good enough. But the paste is still intact. But on the other side, when I removed it, and that's why there's no paste on it anymore, on either of these sides, it, would, it basically separated, it was really dried out already, it was flaking off, and if you look at this plate, uh, I mean, this is all you have pulling the heat away on this side, and I don't know what's going on here. It's like there's a plastic coating. Uh, this is metal. I mean, you can check it. It's not magnetic, but it's metal. You can tell by how it's slowing down the, uh, the travel of the magnet there. So uh, this is made out of some sort of metal. I doubt it's copper. It's some cheap metal, but it looks like it's pulling the heat out there, but there's really... There's nothing dissipating the heat on this side, but what was even worse is you have about a millimeter thick pad of thermal paste here, and thermal paste isn't meant to really be that thick. It seemed more of a paste than a pad. So I think this is where the problem for the heat is coming from, is it's doing a decent job for the memory chips on this side, but then the memory chips on this side are just they're just getting um, really warm and it just can't pull out all the heat um, and that's why it's showing so high I don't know where it's where the sensors are for the the memory if it's individual on those things or if there's another probe somewhere measuring the temperature but um, if it's a probe like say the probes over here it's measuring the temperature in that area and these chips are okay and then this side's bad. I could imagine it being more of a problem than than even the uh, the software is reporting. So, um, so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find some better thermal pads for the other side, something that's more designed for that. And I'm just going to reconnect everything and. Uh, I'm going to try putting a little bit of thermal paste in those areas on this side of so where it makes the connection from here to the copper it might be able to draw a little more heat out that way and um, I'm going to put it back together for now and see if I can get the temperatures down but besides from that I, the only other thing I can think of is completely replacing this back plate uh, with something that can connect you know, a fan, so we'll have, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, heat sink, a, a beefier heat sink connected here, replacing this entire plate. Um, that way you can adequately cool this thing. Um, another thing I'm going to try is uh, see if I can undervolt this and prevent it from generating the excessive heat in the first place. I've uh, watched a few videos that might. Uh, that went into a little bit of detail, but you had to uh, hook up some additional uh, hardware. Um, there was a connection on the board somewhere that you should be able to connect it to. Uh, I don't know if this even has that connection. He had a different model of a board. But yeah, that, that's it. So, uh, so overall, I would say that I think this kind of a design for the memory was done on purpose. I think uh, HP and other manufacturers like Apple, they are designing their hardware to fail. So they're, they have the minimal cooling on the memory that you can. And most software, when you're playing your games, you're looking at your, you know, the core temperature, so you may not even know it's hot. And it's running at you know 105 when you're gaming for a year, and then the memory chip goes bad, you know, conveniently right after your warranty expires, and then and then you're out a $1,500 video card. And if you would have just if they would have just spent a little extra on designing a better cooling uh, solution, uh, you might get you know an extra year, two years, three years out of this thing. So um, I'm gonna try to do that and avoid this problem before it starts. All right, so I have everything plugged in again, and it has been running for about 20 minutes, uh, mining with nice hash. I didn't change any of the settings, 
So let me uh, pull up Afterburner and show you that. And this is basically I did a, a underclock on the uh, the core clock and a little bit of an underclock on the memory um, to try to reduce the the heat and also the uh, power limits at 85. And around this time, you know, running 10, 20 minutes, it was still overheating, running over anywhere between 102 and 104 C. And all I did was change out the uh, thermal pad, and even that is, uh, it was supposed to be a Band-Aid, uh, not a very good thermal pad. Um, could have done better cleaning it up beforehand, um, but I ordered some, some better thermal pads, and this was just kind of tied me over in the meantime. But even uh, with the, just changing the thermal pad and putting a little thermal paste around the, the copper area like I discussed earlier, I was able to reduce the temperatures down to between, it's fluctuating between 90 and 92, and it's staying more on 90. So we're sitting you know, under that 95 C mark we're aiming for, and there's still a little headroom. I could probably boost up the uh, the clocks a little bit and put a little bit more power into it and still maintain under 90C. So um, I'm going to uh, make a follow-up video to this one once I got the better thermal paste and maybe a fan on the back blown on it and seeing how far we can push this. So um, yeah, if you're having issues with your VRAM temperatures going too high, uh, open it up if you feel comfortable and take a change out that thermal pad in the back and see if you can drop out your temperatures.